This any conference will now be recorded. Any questions you'd like to ask me? Any questions, guys? Okay, I can consider silence, sir. No. So, so where are we on the assignment, sir? So, so try to complete those assignments. It will definitely help you guys. And the secondly, so we'll enter into the new concept of uh, writing, uh, which is one thing you guys are going to be working with an S3 static website, the one which is uh, Old, right on the previous sections so that is one thing that one will going to be uh, discussed right now and second thing we'd like to go with the uh, respective aws backup services and third one is we will guys are going with an aws certification manager which is going to be enabled for the https right and tomorrow we're going to discuss about the cacd pipeline right so those things will going to be completed. So I think, uh, yeah, that's called uh, our section is going to be completed by tomorrow. So now here, uh, yeah, give me a second. Still, I have not got the access. One, one minute, I'm waiting for it. I finished the issue before it started. important thing so the firstly uh, we'd like to go with the s3 bucket right uh, posting of your respective static website on the s3 bucket this is uh, generally uh, one of the real time right requirement for your respective customers host their static website right even though you guys are going to be belong to a microservices environment or you guys are going to belong to a, the respective uh like you know uh monological based application or you guys are going to belong to other applications the hosting of the static website right s3 static website is a pretty important s3 static website right or uh, hosting a static website hosting a static website by using s3 that is one main important thing here. So now here, so for that hosting a static website by using S3 bucket. So you guys need to create a S3 bucket. Right, you guys need to create a S3 bucket. So I'd like to create a fraud iPhone static iPhone website. Right, fraud iPhone static iPhone website. This is on the respective Mumbai region, right? This is on the respective Mumbai region, broad iPhone, static iPhone website, right? Now here, this is, uh, I will allowing the access for this. Versioning is going to be enabled for this, right? Encryption of the side of the mechanism you guys need to enable. So you know how to encrypt the respective data by using NKMS, right? We discussed right now here creating of the static website and as you know that the bucket name should be unique uh is this screen sharing is there i'm not able to see you're not able to see the screen it's visible now device is not visible it's visible now for me okay Thanks. Create a bucket now. Thank you. Thank you. Create a bucket here. So now here, this is your respective bucket one. For this, you need to provide the permissions for the respective, right? For this, you guys need to provide the permissions for your respective S3 buckets. 
right? So now here go for the permissions, right? Here, this is your respective bucket policy. Edit the bucket policy and provide the specific permission for this. Right, provide the specific permissions for this. Right. This is one thing. So this bucket policy, you guys need to ensure that this bucket policy, you guys need to ensure that, right? I'm sharing this bucket policy in our group to ensure that. You have a proper access to access your respective static website. You need to have a proper access to access your respective static website here. This is one main important thing. And secondly, you guys need to ensure that, right, this HTML code, you guys need to upload here. And before that, you need to go with the respective, right, respective properties, right? Here, you need to enable the static website hosting. Mm -hmm. This property you guys need to enable here for the static website. Enable the respective static website. So here the document path. What is the document path for the Apache? You have a document root document here where www.html and this is the default path here. Right, index.html. This is the default path and this is the 404.html HTML here, right? If developer need to require a redirection rules, so what they will provide you a JSON, which will help them to automatically redirect, right? Which will help her for them automatically redirect. Because in the load balancer, you have an option to redirect that, right? In a load balancers, you have an option to redirect it. In load balancer, you have an option to redirect. And now here, you don't have an option here, right, to redirect. So that's why you need to provide a JSON format file. So that you need to provide a JSON format file, which helps us them to redirect, right, which helps us them to redirect. This is one thing in save the respective changes. As soon as you created, so first step is you need to create a S3 bucket, create a S3 bucket with versioning bucket with versioning and with under the permissions, under the permissions, enable the, right, enable the static website right enable the static website enable the static website now the second thing here is provide the necessary permissions necessary permissions right provide the necessary permissions here provide the necessary permissions here and then enable the provide the necessary permissions right and then provide the necessary permissions and then upload the html file upload the html file here so go for this one go for this one add the files so I will provide the HTML file as well for you guys. Upload the HTML file here. Right, upload the HTML file as well.
so now here as soon as you have uploaded this respect to html file if you click on this file you will get an respective http url here this is your object here right this is your respective object here this is your respective object here so now here if this one is not happening because right this is your respective object here so what is showing there aws kms key of the signature requesting the server side encryption is throwing the error actually right you need to provide the necessary privileges for the kms as well right for the s3 bucket for the kms as well you need to provide the necessary privileges here so now here if you go for here i have created the s3 bucket earlier which is does not having the encryption here right this is going to be right the output of this one that means this html file is not supporting the encryption here we need to create your respect to html file in terms of to support your respect to encryption so once you guys are did here right once you guys are did here you guys are going to be get your respect to static website so that's how no need to create an ec2 instances no need to create an respect to installation of your respect to apache package right no need to manage your respect to ec2 instances hardware like providing the t2 micro or t2 medium or other areas right all these things you no need to provide actually right all these things you no need to provide so just create a s3 bucket upload it and enable this one right am i clear on this s3 bucket jiva they go to so this is how you guys are getting one task actually in your respective real time environment right in your respective real time environment this is how you guys are need to work on it clear so they will ask you to go with the s3 bucket with the static website so now here similarly you guys will going to be have an aws backup actually for your services this is also important for you to create a backup for your evs so previously you have discussed about the life cycles actually right previously you have discussed about the life cycles actually to take your respective backup you have manage your respective retention period at least for 7 days or 10 days or 15 days right or 35 days right those things you already discussed actually so now here right now here this aws backup is going to be this aws backup is going to be right really helpful to take the backup for the right to take the backup for the all ec2 instances you are like ebs it going to take it will going to create the ami it is also going to take the efs and it will also going to take the respective right it will also going to be take the respective dynamo db table backup right dynamo table backups and it is also going to be take respective right and it is also going to take respective rds right this is also going to take rds here right this is also going to take rds here so this is completely right this is completely take the keeps on repeatedly taking the backup section takes on repeatedly taking the backup section right repeatedly taking the backup section so now here the one thing you guys are need to understand here taking of the respective backups here 
is very important because the backups are is really required for your real time environment either you can create a lambda functions by using an python programming language as i said earlier to trigger your respective ec2 instances right or else you can right you can use this respective aws backup services to take the backups here right to take the backup here or you can use this respective services to take the backup here so that is one thing that is one main important thing so now here now here for every this rule is going to be applicable 30 days of retention period right this rule is going to be applicable 35 days of retention period that means the backups which is older than 35 days right the backup is older than 35 days right the backup is older than 35 days is completely the backup is older than 35 days is completely going to be right older than 35 days is completely going to be falls under the category of retention period falls under the category of retention period here. that is the meaning of it so now here so now here guys following the gokul jiva mangesh you guys are following what i'm trying to say yeah 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 so now here you guys need to right right now here you guys need to ensure that right you guys need to ensure that this backup retention period is 35 days here this is a prod iphone backup rule prod iphone backup rule here so now this backup rules is going to be a default by day, daily which is an so daily backup to the retention period or you can respect to delete it add the backup rule so choose the right this is the default one the frequency is hourly backup or you can go with every 12 days 12 hours or you can go with daily or you can go with weekly or hourly of us right hourly it going to be or you can also use the custom backup window if suppose i want the backup for every 3 hours or every 5 hours or every 7 hours what i need to do if suppose i want to back get a backup for every 3 hours or every 5 hours what i need to do customized backup so, window is right yeah customized backup window is going to be only available to take the backup on the necessary time stamp actually right necessary time stamps so but i want a backup for every 5 hours or every 7 hours i want to backup so you need to write a lambda function you need to create a function right you need to create a function here and what do you need to do with that function you need to trigger the function with the help of right cloud watch events right you need to trigger the functions with the help of cloud watch events you got my point create a lambda functions for every 7 hours right create a lambda functions for every 7 hours and enable those functions actually right and enable those functions actually for every 5 hours so that's what you guys need to do if you want a custom function so now here so now here so now here this is the copy the destination if you want to copy this respect to destinations uh, for every like you know for your dc and dr right for your respect to dc and dr if you want to uh, copy this respect to location right if you want to copy this respect to locations for to perform the activity for your dc and dr right so where you need to do so you can copy this destination to singapore as well 
so that you can easily right so that you can easily copy the backup to the singapore region to perform the dc and dr activities right data center and data center disaster recovery right disaster recovery so those kind of things you can you guys are good to go and you can perform with the help of this one then you can perform this kind of things actually so now here this is your add the backup rule so the backup rule name equal to prod iphone backup iphone rule for every hourly basis right hourly basis create this plan action right now here the resource assignment for this rule actually or the resources is on right for this rule actually the resource assignment for this respect to rule actually you guys need to right for this respect to resources assignment for this actually what you guys need to do is you need to keep on create the respective tax right you guys need to use to create the respective tax actually right create the respective tax actually so now here if suppose i want to enable this respective backup rule hourly basis for an evs volume so this having a the respective storage here right this having some respective volume here this is the volume and here you can enable a tag with a name called backup equal to true backup equal to true right backup equal to true now this is going to be helpful for the save the backup here now backup equal to true now to apply this respective rule for all the tax you need to manage backup equal to true and you need to go with this respective one here so now here this is your backup plan this is your backup rule right you need to go into assign the resources they will ask you for the tax include the resources consisting of the this respective tax i would like to name this resources as evs iphone volumes i would like to take the backup for the evs iphone volumes here now my here is equal to backup equal to true right the volumes which is going to be there the backup equal to true right the volumes which is going to be there the backup equal to true it automatically right it automatically assign this respect to resources here so that's how it going to be taken right the backup is keeps on performing the respective backup for this respect to evs volume it will correlate right it will correlate the tax where it going to have the backup equal to true and it will keeps on performing those activities that right? it keeps on performing those activities here am i clear on this any questions any doubts here this is what it do am i clear on this guys this is what it going to do actually for each backup which it will be going to validating the tax and once it going to validating the tax here right once it going to validating the tax here 
right it going to keeps on performing the backup activity similarly you can also perform the resources like dynamo db rds right you can also perform the respective right rds right all these areas it going to be performing the activities the backup related activities so this is how it works right this is how it going to happen so here. this backup can you can able to use for the emi backup the snapper backups or only yeah yeah you can do it you can do it every every but you need to perform the activities with the help of tax it going to be validate the tax option right if it matching the tax it going to be perform those activities that's it simple but again this is one service actually you you are paying for it so people who are not able to write the lambda functions with the help of python right those people are going to be right those people are going to be choose this kind of this kind of service am i clear on this but again you need to pay for this service as well right again you need to pay for this service as well that's how it works so we need to pay twice or then for example i want to take yeah. the snapshot backup so snapshot yeah, that is one one charge and taking the backup for the aws services that is also other charge you are paying for for this actually but if you are using the lambda right if you are using the lambda whenever the function got triggered how much resources you are using i showed you right how much resources you are using at that specific point of time only right you guys need to pay but if you adopt this services you need to pay the bill for this respect to as well right this guy provided a ui back end also this guy running the python services only you got my point what i'm trying to say so this is one thing that you guys need to understand right this is one thing that you guys need to understand here right right jiva so that is one thing so now here now here you guys need to understand about the uh, i think gopula avinash asked me actually avinash asked the question and he will not available in the class okay ssl certificates these are very pretty small topics actually that's why i took the at the end of our section very pretty small topics so now here in the real time environment you will get this respect to ssl certificate actually so this is ssl certificate actually you guys need to purchase this respect to ssl certificate to get uh, encrypt and your decrypt of your respect to data you guys need to right to encrypt and decrypt of your respect to data you guys need to provide this respect to ssl certificate to encrypt and decrypt of your respect to data you guys need to create this respect to ssl certificate right to create this respect to ssl certificate you guys required a fully qualified domain name right fqdn is required fully qualified domain name is required actually right fully qualified right fully qualified domain name you need to create actually so now here in this respect to fully qualified domain name here you already have you already purchased one domain right where you purchase with the help of godaddy you purchase your respective domain here right this is your respective domain the one which you already purchased so i purchased one domain actually this is my domain actually kpastro like dot in 
have already purchased the domain. Similarly, you guys need to purchase this respective domain. So now here, once you guys are purchasing this respective domain, you guys need to create a uh, certificate for it, right? You guys need to create a certificate for it. So just give me a second. I already created the certificate for testing purpose. Let me delete it to avoid the confusion. So yeah, I already tested this. So no further issue. Let me delete those resources. So let me delete this respect to load balancer as well. And to avoid the confusion of the resources, so I am changing my region in the plain region. I am changing this region to the North Virginia here, so where no resources are available. That's what I will do. Let me check once again. I did the practical of this. Let's go with the uh, this one then uh, Ireland. So now here you need to, if you want to go with this SSL certificate, you need to go with the certificate manager here. Right, you guys need to go with the certification manager here. So and you need to write the certificate here. Right, you guys need to write the respective certificates here. So now here this rising of the certificate is very important here. So for that it required a fully qualified domain actually. For that it required a fully qualified domain. It was a certificate here. It's a public certificate. So now here I'm using the star dot this respective domain name. What is this domain name actually? I'm using this respective domain name here. Now here DNS validation is going to be recommendable, right? You need to provide this respective DNS validation name equal to fraud, right? So you need to create a certificate. You need to provide to create a certificate. You guys need to provide a fully qualified domain here and request it. So now here, this request is going to be pending here, right? And these guys are going to be generate a C name and the value of this respective C name. So now these values you need to update here. Right, on the respective go daddy here. Over this respective manage of the DNS. 
go for the managed DNS, and you need to enable this respect to C point here. This is your respect to C name. This is your respect to C name. This guy already given the C name here. This is your respect to C name. Right. And this is the value for it. And this is the value for it. You need to update this respective C name along with the respective value this guy is given for you. Now to validate here, you need to go ahead and check into the DNS watch input. Now it is completely giving the output for you. Now it is completely giving the output for you. Right. Now here, completely giving the output for you here. So here, so here, after some time, this certificate is going to be issued actually. Once you have provided the C name record entry on your respect to DNS management, right? That certificate is going to be right, issued actually. The certificate is going to be issued. So now here, once you have did this one, right? You can create your load balancer, right? You can create your load balancer with SSL certificate. For that, I'm creating this one with the help of, right? This certificate, right? And the EC2 instances and the load balancer and the load balancers, I'm going to create HTTPS with the help of this certificate. So launching of the instances here. So now here, I'm providing this respective, uh, this is one HTTPS here. Uh, this website is for HTTPS check. Right, HTTPS check. This website is for HTTPS check actually. Name equal to HTTPS. Name equal to HTTPS. And here, what is the port number I need to open guys? What is the port number I need to open here? What is the port number I need to open? For HTTP, right? 
now here where is my target group will going to be listen whether for the, it will listen on the load balancer or whether it will listen for the this one the ec2 instances on the load balancer hmm, target group only in the end of the story the load balancer will hit your respect to target group right http is remain same actually your at will going to be remain same because my service apache reasons on at it is not presenting on the core portal isn't it right so this is see look at here where is my hit will go for it where is my hit will go so here is your respect to alb here is your respect to alb here right here is your respect to alb and here is your respect to target group right here is your respect to target group and here is your respect to ec2 instances so the target group will listen on which health check it will going to check which health check it going to check udai right which health check it going to check the ec2 health check the ec2 health check listens on which one ec2 health check listens on which one 80 right ec2 health check listens on which one 80 ec2 health check listens on which one 80 here that's the reason you need to opening the port 8 but where your application load balancer will going to listen application load balancer will listen on now you have brought your respect to ssl certificate application load balancer will listen on https application load balancer will listen on https so that is 443 but your ec2 still remains on http so now here create a respective load balancer first prod hyphen alb so now here selecting the two things for two availability zones let's go with the default we'll open there now here listen in is 443 and you need to create a target group now my target group is still on http because my service is listening on 80 we'll check here the same thing index.html this is my same path using the threshold as 2 and the success code is 200 to 393 default target group include this one as below so now here i am selecting the certificate here which is an https here now selecting the certificate which is an HTTPS and create a load balance. So now here, this is completely HTTPS protocol here. 
which is an secure one which is an secure one here we'll wait till the it got provision here let it became active state we'll see how it works Let it wait. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, sir, feel free to ask. Still, it is in provisional state. So now it is an active state. Now here, I'm going to point this my load balancer here. I'm changing the route for this. So route 53, I'm going for the route 53. And I'm posting this route here for this my domain. So now here, this is my production domain, broad icon domain, publicly hosted one, publicly hosted one, create this respective hosted zone. Under this respective hosted zone, create a record. Now, which record I need to go? Uday, Gokul, which record I need to go? Aliasing record, you need to go. Are you guys are there? Are you guys yes, have forgot yes. actually? But no answers for you. Yeah, Elias only. Yeah. So now here, I'm going to be providing the record as www.kpsco.in should going to be used aliasing to my respective A record is an aliasing here. To my respective application load balancer with this uh, Ireland region
So now here, So now here, I'm changing my route here to this respect to name services. So www.kpstore.line, I'm going to be pointing to this respect to domain. Right. So we'll wait for it till the DNS propagation is going to be there. Right, this kps so dot in whether it got resolving or not we'll see here so it resolving to this name server the one which you have created hope it will resolve for my network as well because my network isp provider is not that sharp so can you also try so if you try you will get an ssl actually can you also try this one I don't think so. My uh, this guy is not so. This is going with HTTPS here, but it will redirect actually. Uh, this will redirect. Still, the DNS data set is not found actually. Use HTTPS actually. Can you try once? Any one of you? Let me try also from my mobile. I'm using the Intel. Probably it will route fast. So name still not resolved for me. So can you guys sir, uh, perform for you as well? Huh? Mm, not getting them. It will take five to ten minutes of time, guys. I depend upon the DNS propagation report. You are ISP provider. What it will going to do is now you will get an SSL certificate for this. Now you will get an SSL certificate for this. At least this is propagated. Any mistake from our end? What is the tools is saying? Are it getting the healthy status or not? Firstly, we'll check into that. This target is healthy, no issue with the target. This is the issue with the DNS only. Uh, so connection firewall is got failed actually with the HTTPS. So target for the default port I have not opened that let me open it. Probably that might be a chance that you guys are waiting for. Not enough data, so I need to open the security group tool 443.
so https right i am not opening http right now only https i am opening because i incorporate my ssl certificate there ssl certificate license on port 43 ssl so now let me reload once again at once to see for this yeah this site is http check actually certificate is not valid because if your certificate is valid it will not going to be there so and it got issued it will take some time to get valid actually so certificate will going to be valid for some at some point of time as you are into a free tier account that might be one chance or there are been issued by amazon they need to update globally that c name record need to update globally so now here we will try to uh, validate our website as well uh, at kpastro.life live dot in https colon colon slash so here it's working this propagation will take some time now can you guys search check whether http anyone check https is working here with this respect to domain actually https you need to check not http so this output you need to get the certification validation will take some time for the issuer of certification actually the c name need to be propagated globally then only your ssl certificate is going to be valid This is on this HTTPS. Reload this one. HTTPS only is calling You're giving the wrong spelling or what? This output you need to get actually. Anyone is getting this output actually. This is the DNS check issue, which will take some time to. anyone is getting google or getting this one that is how your respective ssl check ssl enablement will going to be happen right Can someone check whether this is happening or not? So I am checking in my mobile. This will happen. Wait. Still, still not coming for you. So you are getting this error or what? think it's already this is yes i'm getting the same error that uh, check the firewall issue okay check the firewall issue you are getting no i'm getting, getting, getting uh, check no no i am getting check if there is a typo in the kp stereo dot live i'm getting that one okay okay this is the one actually you need to add https before that 
I'm using the correct spelling only, right? Yes. In the senior record, what is the thing I given actually in the dot fifty three? This is the one. Yeah, this is correct only. And in the DNS also, which one I give? www.kpt should go with this one. This will take some time. It's, it's given off now, right? This will take some time actually to get propagated globally. You need to wait for it, right? After some time, you will get this one. www.kpt astro. Mm -hmm. For me, it's still the name resolution is not happening. Name error name resolution not resolved actually. For me, still the propagation issue has happening. Okay, we'll wait for some time. Probably by tomorrow we'll check this output. So this is what you guys need to use the SSL actually here, right? In the target group, you need to create the SSL for your respective domain, and you guys need to use this respective certificate for your respective AWS or search here. This is tar you've been using the indicating because of the right star that KPS for dot is because of the Right, you can use the wildcard set, any kind of WW or any kind of set you guys are going to use here. Only www.kpastro.life, the certificate is valued here. If you use this one, if you are using uh, this respective domain, why it is not getting the valid in the sense, in the in, while rising here, you given the certificate only for the star.kpastro.life.in. That's why this certificate is not valid for the other domains actually. Because of that, you are getting this error. So when this respective proper website is going to be open for you, right? When this proper website is going to open for you, right? With HTTPS, so when the propagation is happening fine, then it will automatically, right? Then it will automatically, your certificate is going to be valid. Why you have raised the respective certificate with only star dot kp astro live dot in? You have not raised for the all the domain. That is one main important thing you need to understand. Am I clear on this? Oh yes. So that is one one thing actually. So will. Uh, We'll uh, work on uh, this respective one. Uh, we'll work on uh, the CI/CD one by tomorrow. Before, uh, so probably I will complete this section. So today is uh, Wednesday, right? Friday is our last class, right? So I will discuss about the resume by tomorrow, right? By tomorrow itself, I will because they'll complete whatever the topics which I have committed. So post that. I'm going to taking care of the right post that I'm going to taking care of the CACB. I will take exactly one scenario. So I will explain, but exactly this required and DevOps skills. I will try to explain what the C is going to do. Right. Yeah, please, please. It's really, I, I am really waiting for it, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see, we will definitely cover. So that is the reason. Right. Uh, we'll connect by tomorrow and meanwhile just go ahead and try this so definitely it is going to be open for you so after some time it will open as i as i said here it will take 30 minutes this guy say to propagate so wait for that so after 10 15 or like that you can able to cover this right. this is how it's going to happen this so, uh shun kai or question actually so we are creating AMI, right? For example, uh, from the instance we are creating on EMI, from the EMI we are, we are you know, 
building one more instance of it. So, for example, uh, in the real time environment, right? So, for example, if we take SUSE and XR, you know, Red Hat Linux. So, the patches will be coming, right? So, for example, uh, using the DMI, we are building the instances of it. So, for example, the, uh, every month uh, the SUSE or Red Hat, they're releasing the patches. So, in this case, like how we can able to, because we can't, uh, you can use the same existing EMI, right, to build this one because if there has to be updated EMI, has to be patched. Okay. So they in this update. case, we have to they keep on. Update. EMI. No, no, they will update. So whatever, uh, uh, whatever uh, you want it, right? Uh, the patches wise, if you want to incorporate the patches, you need to like you know, uh, if you want to incorporate the patches. Uh, you guys completely uh, use an Ansible, right? Ansible you need to use to update the patches for the existing mission. So while creating the new missions, the AMI is automatically going to update at the patches. AWS guys will going to be keeps on updating the patches as per their needs. If, it's, if it's, I'm not using Amazon, Amazon is, if you want it. sorry. You know, I'm not using any Amazon EMI or something. It's just I can buy buy your own licensing which I'm using. No, you need to use the Red Hat EMI, right? You cannot use it. Correct. Red Hat yeah, EMI only I'm going to use, which is a paid as paid as go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this case, like how oh, my question is like how we are how we are going to push. Like how to push that. Yeah, but uh, like, in case you need to use Ansible, Red Hat satellite. For existing instances, while creating the new instances, the with the help with that new AMI, they will automatically update the patches. For new creating instances, the patches are already incorporated in the AMI. For existing instances, you need to use Red Hat satellite by using Ansible. From Ansible, we we have to push. Yeah. We need to push. You mean like we need to push to the server, right? Not on the. Is, is there anything we can able to no, the EMI, right? On the server. Okay. okay. So if you have any, for example, uh, the existing EMI have any vulnerability fix or something, and the vulnerabilities are available, so how to fix that? No, same thing. How you are fixing in the on premises? Same thing. Why are you using the Red Hat satellite patches, right? Same thing you need to use to put the patches over the server. Okay, but you are building your respective armies by using an operating system. Similarly, to boot your respective EC2 instancer, you are using the AMI. After once you create it, you are not using that respective boot uh, image, right? Whatever you are using the boot image, you are not using that, right? So you are using your Red Hat satellite to Incorporate the patches. Same kind of stuff in the in your respective server easy to instances. Same with my server. Okay, so uh, basically this EMI will be only uh, to build this kind of ISO image, right? So we can able to yeah. the time yes. of being built. ISO image. After that, we can delete the EMI, right? It will not impact. You can delete the EMI. It will not go to impact. You can delete the AMI. It will not go into impact. Sorry. Uh, so after the server build, so we, you can use we can we, okay. So, okay. So I think what is breaking from my side? Just, so we can delete the AMI, right? So it will not impact the existing it. It will not impact. It's kind of an ISO only. The same as an ISO only. That's what I okay, okay, okay. And the way how you are doing this one, yeah, the same thing you need to do. Same thing you guys need to perform in the activity. That's all. Right? Okay. So that is one thing. Tomorrow I will explain you about the resume and the, whatever the interview questions. And day after tomorrow we will continue with our CACD and we'll call it as our section as well. Right. That's all. But uh, from April new sessions are coming, right? So in that any new topics are added or just the same topics? No, no, no. 
only for this batch i added actually for those batches even i'm going to cut few of the topics okay this whatever the certificate manager and this respect to aws backup i already uh, this is not in our syllabus actually whatever i'm discussing is not in syllabus but yeah still you guys are asking that's why i extended myself right mm. that is one thing okay guys uh, we'll call it as a day and we'll continue by tomorrow thank you